Hey, good afternoon everybody, Uneducated Economist here. I thought I'd come out here and try and give you a shot of, shot of the sunset, but uh, unfortunately the sun went down before I could. But we got our buddy out there who just paddled out to a sailboat and uh, yeah, he lives out there. He paddles in and comes and gets his groceries and then man, that's where he lives. So I thought I'd come out today and talk a little bit about blockchain technology. So I read an article coming out of Forbes and if you're not familiar with blockchain technology, um, basically it's the a distributed ledger so everybody's computer has a copy of this ledger and if you want to change the a transaction or make an entry onto the ledger all the computers have to agree to it I'm not gonna go any deeper than that but that's pretty much the gist of it and uh, in this article it was really quite telling because basically they're gonna be tracking food with it and and it was neat because they they were talking about uh, beef right and so the time that a cow was born they can tag it with an RFID chip and then track that animal f all the way through its entire life all the way to the end user so it can tell you when it got its vaccinations it can tell you when it got butchered it can tell you where it got packaged when it got you know when it uh, was distributed when it got to the retailer and ultimately when it was purchased um, and this is going to provide like an incredible benefit to to the food industry like say for contamination like when you have like these huge recalls on food they're pretty much going to be able to instantaneously tell you right where all that food is and which ones you need to pull right because they're going to have a distributed ledger that's going to say everything that's attached to this particular item needs to get recalled and they'll know right where all that item right right where all those items went to right so it won't be like they have to recall all this beef because they're not sure which one it is they can recall just the specific packages that they know are contaminated uh, it's gonna be a huge benefit to uh, to the to the food distribution and then uh, so I found that to be a good article um the other one that I found out there was uh, was one that came out of the Federal Reserve and it was pretty interesting it, it, I believe it was titled like the withering price of Bitcoin or something and it had two cases in there a bearish case and a bullish case and in the bullish case it was actually I mean I guess it was okay um, I think it could have been written a little bit better they were trying to compare like a ten dollar bill and two five dollar bills and then trying to compare like Bitcoin to altcoins and I don't know it was kind of confusing I mean I don't like I said, I think they could probably have written it a little bit better, but you know, it was okay. The bearish case scenario, on the other hand, I would found quite telling because there was two points that they made inside of the bearish case scenario that I would thought were were actually kind of more bullish than they were bearish. And one of them was is that it's a permissionless system. They admitted that, right? And then the other thing they said was is that the 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 price of Bitcoin will not go to zero, most likely. And the reason why they say that is because it really only takes a handful of people who want to use the Bitcoin program to give it some value. So in their opinion, what they were saying is that Bitcoin, although is intrinsically worthless, does have some value only because there are people who are willing to use it. And if those are people that are willing to use it, then it will never have a value of zero. Anyway, um, that was my little bit of a take on blockchain technologies. I wanted to give you a shot of the river, but it's getting too dark. Anyway, good evening, everybody. Talk to you later.